Our next panelist is Craig Levy, uh, Deputy Federal Coordinating Officer with the Federal Emergency Management Agency for response to Hurricane Matthew. Uh, Mr. Levy has over 30 years experience in incident response and emergency management at the local and federal levels. When he's not deployed, he works as Chief of FEMA's uh, Exercise Branch, and in that role, he leads a team of specialists who plan and execute FEMA's training exercises. And I can't thank you enough for what you've done for North Carolina. And, and you know, you, sometimes you see on TV people uh, are not satisfied with FEMA's response, the timeliness, or whatever. But we know uh, when you get in an emergency like this, people's patience run very, very thin. And, and it's understandable if you've lost your house. Uh, all your belongings and, and you're under that stress, but I can tell you in North Carolina they did an amazing job. So Craig, thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for those very kind remarks. You're absolutely right that in, in time of disaster people do get a little impatient, and rightly so. And, and that's actually what drives a lot of us from FEMA that have come from various careers. I used to be a firefighter, a local emergency management guy, and a lot of us in FEMA have, this is our second or third career. And we're here because we want to help people. And we want to help people. We want to be there on their worst day. We want to be there to try and do something to make it better. And in that vein, uh, touching a little bit on what uh, Mr. Starling had to say when he talked about how federal agencies try and adapt and adopt different directives and laws and policies that come out from uh, the legislative slide, side on Congress or from the, uh, the White House directives that come out. We try and adapt those to the situations that we're presented with. And in emergency management at FEMA, we are very glad that there's oftentimes wiggle room in some of those rules because as those of you who just responded to and, and were impacted by Matthew, not everything fits within the black and white rules of, of what is written in a law or a regulation. And sometimes it's those between spots where we have the flexibility that allow us to respond to actual need and have impact. And so in the interest of that, the Deputy Federal Coordinating Officer, the, the, the Coordinating Officer, this is one of the few positions or a few things in government where the name actually describes what we do. The federal coordinating officer coordinates the federal response to come support the state. So what we do is we will come and we will meet with various people from the state, Director Sprayberry, we'll meet with um, agriculture, whoever has the need, and we will help coordinate, oh, hang on a second, there's this government agency that has this program, let me bring them in, and we try and match up the need with the resource that we have. And where those don't match up, we kind of make it up as we go, which is what we did with um, what Ms. Stewart was talking about with the um, situation with composting the, the uh, chickens and the poultry. And what we ended up doing is almost two million chickens, by our statistics, we've been able to gather almost two million chickens, as, as uh, was just said, died during that flooding. It was estimated it would cost about $6 million to do what we needed to do in order to have a positive impact on public health. And that's the way we couched the question and dealt with it from the federal perspective. We dealt with it as a public health issue. And what that allowed us to do was allow us the flexibility we needed in order to take our unusual, as you said, public assistance program and actually help fund the very quick response in order to deal with the situation and not have a public health issue. So we ended up, this is the, uh, this was the first grant that FEMA released into the North Carolina response. It was done 18 days after the uh, impact of Hurricane Matthew, which 18 days, federal government doing anything in 18 days, I think you'll agree is for fairly rapid. Uh, some of the stuff that we did, we released uh, two and a half million dollars so far on part of that, what we call the project worksheet, or part of that project. And what we did in less than, uh, in only 18 days, was get that out into the hands of the, of the response community. 
here at Agriculture so that the composting could be done so that we could keep it from being a public health issue. And then some general statistics that uh, uh, on Matthew overall. So far, uh, Hurricane Matthew caused significant damage, not news to you, to your $84 billion industry. And just here, there was $525 million in agricultural losses and $400 million in crop losses. Here in North Carolina, 80, over 81,000 North Carolinians have registered for assistance. To date, more than $91 million to help survivors through our Individuals and Households program. That isn't what we did with what we've done or are doing with agriculture or any of the other programs. This is individuals impacted to help in the Individuals and Household program more than $91 million. Uh, right now, we are coordinating, working in public assistance with grants for private, nonprofit, government, local government, various industries within the state as start adding up those costs and helping alleviate some of those costs to get back to normal as quickly as possible. And these grants cover at least 75% of the costs during the emergency response phase. Um, and in closing, I'd like to thank very much the people of North Carolina, those that you've entrusted with your emergency response roles. They are awesome professionals and excellent teammates to work with. I get to do this work uh, in lots of states. I've been in over a dozen states, I've gone over a dozen different disasters in the last few years, and I can unequivocally say that the best team I've worked with so far in the cooperation, the professionalism, the sense of duty, and the, and the calling that they have to support you, the citizens in North Carolina, is outstanding, and it's been a privilege to be here, what we call deployed, because I'm coming from home. Uh, deployed to the state of North Carolina and thank you very much for having us.